Hey guys, did you see that thumbs up? Hey guys, it's Cam with Craft and Tailored. In this episode of What Is On My Wrist, we're doing a little bit of a watch review and unboxing. Um, really excited to share this with you. This is the kind of newly released uh, Tornik Revell TR660. It's a new watch that is kind of being produced, it's not kind of, it is being produced by uh, Mark II watches. Uh, for those of you that are in the watch inside circles, you probably are familiar with Mark II watches. They make an awesome homage based watches. They do some like Benders type ones. They're doing some Tornik stuff. They do some Blanc Pond throwbacks. About, I guess a year ago, they came out with this Tornik Revell, I guess, homage or reissue, which is really, really exciting. I reached out to Tornik and signed up to receive one. They've sold out, I think, of the first and second drops of these watches, so they're kind of hard to get. Um, but I'm a big uh, Tornik Revell fan. I love military watches and was really excited about the release of this and was really excited to get one so that I could review it and kind of share it with you guys. So we've reviewed some other kind of homage watches and I'm pretty critical on them because I am a vintage dealer. Obviously that's what Craft and Tailored and what I specialize in. But the thing that I think is interesting about kind of the homage or the reissue watches is that they can either be done really, really awesome and in a way that accents the vintage watch and paying homage to that, but also in a way that leverages kind of, you know, the new, you know, watchmaking technologies that weren't available in the 1950s and in the 1960s. And so I think that it's a fine line between something that can be done really, really well and kind of accent the vintage piece while also being in the, in the modern era, but also something that can be done really bad in a way that kind of destroys what we like so much about the vintage pieces. Um, so I think there's kind of that fine line but we've had Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, we've had TR 900s in our collection. I actually have a couple of Blanc Ponds and TRs in our safe here at Craft and Tailored, but those watches are not easily affordable and easily accessible, so I love it when somebody pays attention to the details, and I think that Mark II really does that with their watches. I've been a fan of the brand for a really long time. We actually have a friend who is on Instagram uh, at Thousand Yards Style, Robert Spangle. Hey, Robert, how you doing? He actually is in the field doing some stuff in the Ukraine, and I think he actually has a Mark II watch on wrist, so that's a field-tested watch, and these guys do a great job. So I can't say enough about Mark II as a brand, um, but I really wanna focus in on uh, this Tornik Revell TR660 and kind of give you my initial thoughts, kind of do a little bit of an unboxing and talk about um, the brand and this specific model as a whole. Hold on one second. A few minutes later. The Tornik Revell reference TR900 is very rare, extremely sought after, and there are less than a thousand known to have been produced. Tornik Revell was basically a watch that was developed in the early 1960s to go after the US Navy's military contract for um, a watch that was to be supplied to their divers and their UDT Special Forces operators. Alan V. Tornik of the Revell factory was basically the representative of Blanc Pond in the United States and kind of put together a watch that was ultimately going to be supplied to the US Navy. Very few were actually sent to the US Navy after they had been manufactured, and the ones that were sent and ultimately used are pretty rare. If you look at past auction results via Christie's or whatever, very few are available, and when they do come up, they sell heavily in the $150,000 plus range. But there is some cool tech kind of in these watches that is um, unique to uh, the TR900 that also is kind of existent in the, the TR660s that are being produced by Mark II. So if you look at like a normal Tornik Raybell TR900, the first thing you'll see is kind of like this life preserver bezel, very big bezel on the outer side of the dial. And very similar to like a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms in the sense that basically they're the same thing, but there are some things that, you know, were kind of made for the US Navy spec. 
So you've got this kind of big outer bezel. Um, you've got very distinctive hands. The hour hand is shorter than the minute hand. The minute hand definitely does have a line in the middle of the hand separating it into two cells or parts. And then you kind of have that broad arrow, almost mill sub sweep seconds hand. The other thing that you'll see is you've got triangle 12 o'clock position dashes at the three, the six, the nine. And then you also have kind of like this little half circle sunset looking device in the middle of the watch of right above the six o'clock marker. And that is actually a water moisture indicator. So that was a specification that uh, the Navy wanted and was requiring for these watches. And that was something that Tornick Raybell um, and Alan B. Tornick uh, kind of created alongside of Blanc Pond to provide the wear of the watch uh, an indicator if it was moisture proof or not. I was so excited when I got the watch, I actually just like immediately opened it. And I think the enthusiast community that has gotten these watches has been really impressed with the construction and overall design of them. So before we get into the details, let's kind of do a little bit of an unboxing. Pete, if you don't mind, can you hand me that? Thank you very much. All right, so um, those of you that really know me uh, will know that I'm not a big fan of like watch like boxes. I think it's gotten a little bit ridiculous. For example, I love Omega Speedmasters. If you go into the Omega Boutique, you buy, you know, just kind of their normal off the shelf moon watch. It's a killer watch, it's awesome, but the box is literally like this big. And if you have more than one watch and you're buying them new, you literally need like a storage unit to just house the surplus of boxes. You can't wear a box. Like I get it, it's all about the presentation, et cetera, et cetera, but like you can't wear the box. So this is kind of cool. This is the TR660 box. Um, it's kind of like similar to what you would like almost get like a, a firearm or something in. It kind of reminds me of like a Glock case. Um, but really cool case. So you open it up, nice little case. And then in here, we've got like these really awesome little foam cutouts. So for example, if you wanted to use this to store like a couple of other pieces, they've got these watch slots in here that are kind of cut out of this foam so that you can put your watches in there. We have the watch. I got mine on this like olive drab NATO strap. And then in the box, you have basically your uh, timing certificate here. This one has my name on it, which is really cool. And then you've got the six position, you know, time adjustment, accuracy, um, the serial number, when it was shipped and all that kind of stuff. And then you kind of have like this really cool, like operating instructions, like printout that shows you basically how to operate all the functions on the watch and you know, all that kind of, kind of stuff, which is really nice. Really simple, nothing too fancy. Um, the one nice little thing that they did do is they send you like a little case of some spring bars. And then this is also kind of cool. Um, they send you like a little spring bar tool, which I thought was like kind of a really nice little, little kind of add in, but nothing like too, too crazy. Um, the watch basically came like this. It had this little tiny rubber band on it to like hold the strap. And then it had like this little tiny, like little like sticky protector. So I already took all that off. Just kept it in here so that I could kind of show you that stuff. All right. I love the finishing on this case. It is a stainless steel case that is bead blasted. It's really, really nice. The TR, the real Tornick Revell TRs are actually a three piece case similar to Blanc Pond. So you kind of have like this outer locking nut and then you have the case back, which is then held in place by the outer locking nut. I think the case design of this is nice. It kind of pays homage to that without being like the three piece case, which is kind of not the greatest design. The spring bars are not fixed on this. Um, so holes through case. And then you kind of have like a little bit of a different crown from the TR series of watches from Tornick Ravel or the Blanc Ponds. They had like a very small crown. This is kind of a nice larger crown, um, but overall case finishing design, really, really, really nice. Um, the bezel, not bi-directional, it's unidirectional. Really, really nice. Really nice fitment, overall real smooth. It's very precise really love it. The other great thing about this is that the bezel's actually loomed. So if you hit this with ultraviolet or if you're able to get this thing into sunlight and then go into a low light setting, the bezel itself is loomed and it has that kind of three-dimensional look, which I think is really, really cool. 
Hands are basically at the military specification that they are, you know, once uh, would have been. So we've got on our minute hand, basically the two luminous filled cells, if you will. And then we've got a smaller hour hand as well as that military inspired sweep seconds hand, which is basically the same hand design and layout. Crown is a little bit different, but I actually kind of like this crown. It looks nice and also it's in the bead glass finish, a little bit larger, easier to operate. The case width is 40 millimeters, so it's not, you know, oversized. It's not some like big over-proportioned case. The case thickness is 14.70 millimeters, so it's not too thick. And the lug width is, is 20 millimeters. Uh, I really love the, the lug width on this. It fits most straps. The crystal is really nice. It's actually a domed sapphire that has an anti-reflective coating over it. And then the luminous material is like a super luminova. So it'll glow blue essentially. What's kind of cool is like we've paid homage to that little like moisture indicator here with it basically saying automatic and then 200 meters. So 660 feet uh, or 200 meters is the uh, depth rating on this. So the movement in this is actually a Seiko movement. It's a caliber NE15, which is really, really cool. The only kind of downside is this movement does have like a date hacking position. So if you are in the, I guess it would be the first position that's the date hacking setting and there's no date on this watch, but like, again, you, you know, without going into making like an in-house caliber movement or going super Swiss, like these things are, you know, kind of needing to be affordable. So um, the watch that I got also comes on this uh, NATO strap, which is, which is really nice. Um, I really like this strap a lot. It's pretty new and it's pretty stiff. So on the wrist, it's kind of a little bit too stiff for me. It's like a single pass NATO strap. I really like the color quite a bit, but it's a little bit rough for me. Uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna give a special shout out to my dude Skip from Saga Trading Company. He actually uh, gifted me this really awesome Phoenix NATO strap that he's kind of distressed and it's like really soft and nice. So I'll probably end up putting this guy on this strap. Although I really do like this olive drab kind of single pass strap. So that's, I guess, kind of like my only knock on the watch. Um, from a quality form eating function kind of finish, I actually put this watch under the microscope. I looked at the way that the luminous was applied to the dial. I looked at the luminous in the hands, the bezel, everything is done really, really nicely. One of my favorite things I think is just the fitment of everything, as well as the crystal being domed almost to what you would see in a TR900 or even like in a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms while being sapphire and anti-reflective. I think it's really, really cool. The watch itself, I think is about a thousand dollars or something like that. And it just possesses all the key details in a watch that I would look for, but at a very affordable price point. And I think that that's what kind of makes these fun and ultimately cool. Let us know what you guys think of this and what other homage watches that maybe we should review or bring into the channel. I'm curious to see what you guys think about that. So I uh, was really excited to share this one with you guys. So far, so good. I'm gonna put it through its paces, but was really excited to receive this so much so that I couldn't even wait to like open it up and, and get it on my wrist. So be sure to check them out. Um, if, you, if you go to tornic-raybill.us, um, you can actually sign up to acquire one of these guys. And the site is really cool and they've got some like really cool lifestyle stuff. I love the whole branding and all that kind of stuff. I think they've done a really good job of that. So I'll provide a link in the description below so that you guys can check them out. As always guys, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you've got watch questions, we're here and happy to help. Drop us a line at info at craftandtailored.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at craftandtailored and I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, share. Let me redo that beat. I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share about it. Go share about it. You know what I mean? Share about it.